A forbidding fortress, seven doors hiding seven secrets, a shocking ending. Welcome to Bluebeard's Castle. Psychological horror isn't a genre of fiction usually associated with opera, but Bluebeard's Castle is one bone-chilling exception. Completed in 1911, Bluebeard's Castle was the first and only opera by Hungarian composer Béla Bartók. The opera's libretto, or text, was adapted from a contemporary play by Bartók's friend Béla Balas. The story put a new spin on an old fairy tale about the latest bride of Duke Bluebeard, who is suspected of murdering his previous wives. Bartok and Balas transformed the story into a gripping psychological tale. Over the course of the opera, Bluebeard's bride, Judith, opened seven locked doors within his castle, the contents of which are highly symbolic. Bluebeard warns her not to open the doors, but Judith insists, wanting to let light into the dark castle and learn more about her possibly dangerous husband. One important sound to listen for is known as the blood motif, although it is less a melodic idea than a harmonic one. It basically consists of the interval of a minor second and its relatives, the major seventh and the minor ninth. As you can hear, it's a quite dissonant, even painful sound, one that would not have been featured so starkly in earlier music. Throughout the opera, it seems to be associated with the blood that Judith discovers throughout the castle, although it appears in other contexts as well. It clearly appears near the beginning of the opera as Judith opens the first door. Within is a torture chamber. The walls are bleeding. Undeterred, she forges ahead to the second door. This one leads to a blood-spattered armory. Dissonant fanfares evoke the weapons of war. Bluebeard now urges her on to the third door, which leads to a treasure trove. At first, we hear a pure, glittering D major chord. But the music becomes more dissonant as Judith realizes the gold is stained with blood. The fourth door reveals a beautiful garden. But it too is watered with blood. The climactic fifth door opens onto Bluebeard's vast domains. Awestruck, Judith sees that the clouds over the land are red with blood. Now, Bluebeard asks Judith to stop, but she refuses. There is no blood through the sixth door, however, only a lake of tears. Bluebeard begs Judith not to open the seventh and final door, but she confronts him. She has heard the rumors. Is the blood in the castle the blood of his previous wives? She must know the truth. Resigned, Bluebeard hands her the seventh and final key. From the seventh door, Bluebeard's three previous wives emerge, silent, expressionless, and adorned in the most precious jewels. To her horror, Judith realizes they are alive. 
Bluebeard tells her the first is the bride of dawn, the second of midday, the third of the evening, and she will join them forever as the bride of midnight. Despite her pleas, Judith is adorned in the heavy jewels and transformed. She enters the seventh chamber and the door closes. Bluebeard ends the opera alone in darkness. Many years would pass before Bartok and Balassa's masterpiece found acceptance on the world's stages. Though completed in 1911, the opera premiered in 1918, during the final months of World War I. After the war, Hungary entered a tumultuous period. Balassa's involvement in the short-lived Hungarian Socialist Republic led the succeeding right-wing dictatorship to ban his works, including Bluebeard's Castle. The opera would not be performed again in Hungary until 1936, and only truly became part of the international repertoire after World War II. Bartok never wrote another opera and never lived to see Bluebeard become an international success. His vision lives on, however, in this haunting tale. You can hear Bluebeard's Castle and more great music performed by the Houston Symphony each week on Houston Public Media. Thank you for watching and enjoy the music.